It's time to rise up, Renegades. I'm Lupine Fiasco, back with more Fi gameplay through the Talishar.net client. Today's game is against Sir Bolton. Let's hop over to Fabry and check out our game plan. This is our deck list. If you want to check out this deck on your own, or even play it on Talishar, the link is in the video description below. While you're down there, be sure to like this video, leave a comment if you have any questions, and if you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to the channel to be notified of daily Fi content. It is the best way to support me as a content creator to make sure you get more excellent Fi gameplay, and I would really appreciate it. Back to the list, our sideboard plan into Bolton has us adding three Command and Conquers, and we are cutting Double Strike and Soul Bead Strike. The reason for the addition and for these cuts is to play around the possibility of Saber's combo. Most Boltons you'll run into are on a full rating list. Saber's combo is not part of the build. We are playing to make sure we don't randomly lose to the few combo Boltons we do run into. Combo is the strongest play Bolton has against an aggro deck like Fi. The life swing from dealing 24 to 48 points of damage while gaining 6 to 18 points of life is way too much for Fi to overcome. So between our Command and Conquers and our Warmongers Diplomacies, we are doing our best to make sure we don't randomly lose. Double Strike and Soul Bead Strikes are particularly weak against a deck that is absolutely fine blocking as part of their game plan. Combo Bolton runs at least 9 defense reactions which would both stop, would all stop, Soul Lead Strike, and without the potential of a Mask of Momentum or a big Salt the Wound turn, Double Strike is a lot less appealing. Our path to victory against Bolton, either version of Bolton, Raiden or Combo, is to race them. Against Raiden Bolton, their strongest play is Lumina Ascension into multiple Raiden attacks to charge their soul, and gain life while dealing damage. We can beat this with efficient turn cycles, with big Art of Wars, and with the occasional disruption through Command and Conquer. Racing Combo Bolton is even more important, as they lose if they don't fire the combo, and probably win if they do. So we want to deal as much damage every turn as possible, we want to fire off Pouncing Links once the Bolton gets low enough on life that they would have to commit more cards from hand than they want to on blocks. And we are saving our Command and Conquers and Warmongers Diplomacy for the turns where Bolton clearly does not want to block, which would lead us to believe they do have combo. All in all, it is a race. We are trying to deal more damage to them than they can deal to us in a shorter amount of time and largely we have the tools to do it. So let's hop back into game. We'll see how it all comes together. And here we go. We lost the die roll. Bolton has us going first. We have a pretty good offensive hand. Art of War that we can arsenal. The blue to pay for this turn cycle. We are going to be playing out this blue, or at least that's what I would like us to do. Uh, the Ember Blade does not currently have go again. Snatch is a piddly four damage that Bolton can and does block. The advantage of keeping a blue in our hand is that we are guaranteed to be able to pay for this Art of War. That said, I think not playing out the brand there is just a mistake. We see on Bolton's side of the board, they are on a Raiden build. We do not need to worry about getting comboed. It is a lot less important that we have CNC or Mormon's Diplomacy in Arsenal for the turn that we think Bolton is going to combo off. This turns into a much simpler game where we are just racing. We are going to fire off the Art of War here. We will banish the Soul Bead Strike as we don't need a third blue this turn. Overall, this is going to be a weaker Art of War. We have two blues. Double Strike is going to be worth five points of damage with the Cyber Stripe Shuko, but between our blue brand with Cinderclaw and our floating resources, we would be able to activate five for free 
We are not concerned about missing our Fi activation and our Shuko trigger. So overall, we just have a lot of twos going at our opponent. But we do get to work Ember Blade into this turn. We will get to throw a Blaze Headlong for five, and we are going to arsenal this second blue brand to set up for another five card turn on our next uh, turn cycle. Not looking to break Mask of the Pouncing Links here. Bravo giving us cards on block anyway, so not something that would really be advantageous. Salt the Wound worth seven points of damage on that turn, but Bolton has so much life left that I am not thinking about uh, breaking the links. We want to save that for a turn when Bolton really would need to commit too much to blocking it. With a Flame Call Awakening in hand and one Phoenix Flame left in our deck, let's wait for this to resolve. Bolton coming in with Double Raid. We're not looking to block here. He'll end with a card in soul, um, gain two life, deal two dam uh, eight damage with this Raiden. Let's look at how we're going to play this out as we do get to uh, do some flame call shenanigans. We have one Phoenix Flame in our discard. We have one Phoenix Flame in our deck. We have two Flame Call Awakenings left in our deck, so we would like to make sure that we have a Phoenix Flame available for tutoring. We can play this brand. We can pitch Lava Band Loyalty for Emberblade. We can activate Phi to pick up our Phoenix Flame. What I am probably looking to do this turn is save the Flame Call Awakening. Alternatively, we can pitch our Phoenix Flame to the Flame Call Awakening to let us tutor another one. So let's think about the most damage we can do this turn. This Brand with Cinderclaw is one. Pitching for Searing Emberblade is four. Activating Phi to play out the Phoenix Flame is two, thanks to our Shuko, for a total of six. Between these two finishers, we aren't looking to break Snapdragons here, so we would likely E-Strike for seven, bottoming our Snatch and putting our Flame Call into Arsenal. It is unfortunate that we don't have the resources to pick up a Phoenix Flame bottom it with Enlighten Strike, then play Flame Call again. So with all of that said, we are going to look to set up a bigger turn next turn by arsenaling the Flame Call and setting up a six-card hand with the Tutor effect. So what do I like doing here? Brand, Ember Blade, Phoenix Flame, E-Strike 7, Arsenal Flame Call Awakening. Let's see how it plays out in the past. Open with the brand. Bolton doesn't block. This is not terribly surprising. We're not looking to break Pouncing Links this turn, and we are not looking to use our Snapdragons. It seems that I am. Using the Snapdragons here does open the door to a Flame Call E Strike combo. Following up with the Ember Blade. We have our floating resource for the Flame Call Awakening. Play out our Phoenix Flame. We will play out our Flame Call Awakening, tutor our Phoenix Flame, and then bottom it with E-Strike to draw a card. So we put a card in our, to our arsenal. We push another five points of damage. This was a good line. We were able to deal quite a bit of damage to our Bolton, even through them full blocking with hand and giving us the Crown of Providence. I don't like this line in hindsight because we spent our Snapdragon Scalers to do it. Thinking about our Soul Bead Strike in hand, in Arsenal, without a Snapdragon Scalers, it is a little risky to fire that off. 
Fulton still has the back half of Iron Song Versus, as well as a Tunic, if he was really committed to blocking the Soul Beat Strike. We can think about whether we want to play or pitch Art of War this turn. I do think I like playing the Art of War here. This hand is awkward between three reds and a fourth red in Arsenal. If we wanted to save this Art of War, there just isn't a lot we can do with this hand. We could pitch our Lava Burst to play Mountain Anger. We could pitch our Enlightened Strike to Flame Scale Furnace for an Ember Blade and finish up with a Soul Beat Strike. That is a total of 11 points of damage and we arsenal our Art of War. But I really just don't like doing that. Uh, I do like pitching the Lava Burst to pay for this Art of War, banishing the Enlightened Strike, and drawing up. We have a density of blues in our deck that could pay for a Mounting Anger Searing Emberblade. We have reds that we would be able to pitch to Flamescale Furnace to give us two resources to pay for a Mounting Anger, a Draconic Head Jab, Activate Phi. I just think we can push more damage with this Art of War and that we don't necessarily need to set it up. But there's absolutely value in dealing 11 points of damage off of four cards and arsenaling an Art of War. The 11 damage turn is below rate for Phi, but is still fine and sets an Art of War for a future turn. The Art of War draws into two blues, less than ideal, but we are going to get to push a bit of damage this turn. Now to Anger Hits, we are able to banish our Soul Beat Strike. We will push 12 damage off of these attacks. We get a card from Bolton's hand and the back half of the Versus while leaving a card in Arsenal. I would say comparable to our 11 point line, but ultimately suboptimal. I would rather have an Art of War in Arsenal than a Soul Bead Strike, especially considering the hand we drew. Banishing the Command and Conquer here would be a much better line. Bolton giving the Raid and Go again, finishing the turn with an Illuminate. I'm looking to block with the Command and Conquer here. I would have liked to keep it when I thought that Bolton would have an arsenal. I could play out the Roman Renegade, pitch the blue to Emberblade, activate Phoenix Flame, uh, activate Phi to get the Phoenix Flame, then finish with a Command and Conquer. But without a card in Bolton's arsenal, Brutal Assault is a lot less valuable, especially seeing that Bolton has no cards in Salt. Denying Bolton the uh, opportunity to activate his hero ability is just a really, really good play. Yes, he would be able to charge something and banish to the charge, but his options for lines of play just go down when he doesn't have a card in soul. Throwing out the soul bead strike here instead of the salt balloon, I like this play a lot. If the Soul Beat Strike hits, which it does, we put another hit on the chain and get our go again for Salt the Wound. If the Soul Beat Strike is blocked, that either took a defense reaction from Bolton or two cards, and we get to Arsenal the Salt the Wound, which has the potential to set up for a very good next turn while letting us keep Mask of the Pouncing Links available. Bolton activates Tunic, uh, plays Prayer of Bologna, does hit, draws a Celestial Cataclysm, which will likely go into the soul. It does. Engulfing Light here, coming for five. Bolton has the soul available, as well as Snapdragon Scalers. We see the Beacon of Victory activation. Very good. Finds a Lumina Ascension. So we're taking six off of this Engulfing Light. Engulfing Light replaces itself in the soul. Bolton using the Snapdragons here, um, 
as opposed to a card from Soul. We are going to commit to blocking four here. This Warmonger's Diplomacy is worth a potential five points of damage between Searing Emberblade, Phoenix Flame, and a Shuko Trigger on the Mask of Pouncing Link's target. But we still have a pretty good hand. We can deal 10 points of damage. We'll pick up a Phoenix Flame at the end of this chain due to Brand with Cinderclaw making Soul Beat Strike Draconic. And we deny Bolton some life gain that he very desperately needs at this point. We have armor available to block. This Soul Beat Strike is either going to get two cards from Bolton or this Tunic. And Bolton's one card hands are not very threatening to us. So we'll arsenal this Phoenix Flame. We will set up for a strong turn here. With Bolton at six, having no armor available, and with us having a Phoenix Flame left in our deck, we can do some very cute sequencing here. Because we will get the point of damage from our Phoenix Flame and Arsenal, we'll get a point of damage from the Phoenix Flame we find with Flame Call Awakening, and as you'll see, we can break the chain to put a Phoenix Flame into our discard that lets us get a third point of damage from our Phi activation. I'm going to play the Phoenix Flame here. Phoenix Flame will trigger Mask of the Pouncing Lynx. We are going to find a Lava Burst. In theory, we could use Command and Conquer as a finisher, but we would like to just go wider this chain. We'll be able to activate our Ember Emberblade. We can put our Command and Conquer into Arsenal if the game doesn't just end. So like I said, we can break the chain, and the advantage of doing so is that we put our Phoenix Flame on the chain into the discard, which lets us get value from our hero ability this turn. This Phoenix Flame will get a Shuko Trigger, that takes a card out of Bolton's hand, as he must block this in order to live. Here, our Phoenix Flame puts Bolton down to one. A Sink Below or Fate Foreseen doesn't keep him alive through this Lava Burst. He'll need a card from hand and a defense reaction. He doesn't have it, so we take the win. I like this game because it is a good example of the sorts of trickery you can perform with Flame Call Awakening and Phoenix Flames. Being able to arsenal a Phoenix Flame when one is in your discard lets you keep that red go-again attack available to turn on your Flame Call Awakenings and blaze headlongs. It puts a Draconic Link on the chain. For Phi activation, it is a Draconic attack for Emberblade. It can be pitched to Emberblade. It can be pitched to Furnace, uh, Flamespell Furnace to activate your Emberblade. It can be bottomed to Enlightened Strike. It can be bottomed to Enlightened Strike, then tutored back with Flame Call Awakening. A lot of the value from playing your Flame Call Awakenings and Phoenix Flames comes from how you pitch them, how you bottom them, how you use them to enable stronger turns. You don't want to play a game with your Phoenix Flame sitting in your discard the entire time. You want to be actively shuffling them back into your deck, juggling them between hand, arsenal, discard, and you want them to be getting value for you. I said in last week's deck tech, Phoenix Flame is the worst card in your deck, but it is a rare example of playing bad cards to make your good cards better. Flame Call Awakening, Blaze Headlong, Spreading Flames, Tiger Stripe Shuko, Enlightened Strike are all cards that get better from having multiple Phoenix Flames available in a turn. This game is a good example of it. I have better examples coming in the near future. But as you are practicing on your own, playing your own games on Talishar, please remember, practice incorporating your Phoenix Flames into 
other lines of play beyond just attacking with them. That will really increase your win rate, it'll increase your skill as a five player, and it will expand your ability to see better lines as you go through your games. I hope you all had a good time watching this. If you did, be sure to like the video. If you have any questions or any requests for matchups you would like to see me play through and talk through, you can leave a comment. I try to respond to every comment you leave. And again, if you don't mind, uh, if you want to support me and free five content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But otherwise, I enjoyed having you all here, and I will see you all again tomorrow. Take care.